So you're thinking about moving to Glendale, Arizona? Well, in this video, we're gonna talk about the pros and cons, the good and bad, the ups and downs of living in Glendale, Arizona, and we're getting after it right now. <laughs> If this is your first time to the channel and you would like to know everything about living in Glendale, Arizona and the surrounding areas, well, subscribe below and remember to hit the bell so you can be the first to be notified when anything new comes up about Glendale, Arizona. My name is Mary Kay Marino and welcome to Hello Arizona Living and Real Estate. We get calls, texts, emails every day from people just like you looking for help moving to Glendale, Arizona and we absolutely love it. So whether you're moving in nine days or 90 days, call, text, email us, days, nights, or weekends, all our information is below in the description to help you make a smooth move to Glendale, Arizona. As I mentioned earlier, we're gonna talk about the pros and cons, the good and bad, and the pretty and ugly of living in Glendale, Arizona, and we're getting after it right now. Let's go. Some of the things we're gonna be covering about Glendale, Arizona are the schools, the jobs, the economy, the outdoor, the outdoor activity, uh, restaurants, shopping, neighborhoods, and of course, the housing market. We gotta have the housing market in there. Some fun facts about Glendale, Arizona are the population for the moment is 246,000. Just a smidge under that, the exact number that I got from this website is 245,685. So just a smidge under 246,000 people. The median income, I always say medium, but I mean this median income is 46,855. The median age is 33.9. I think it's safe to round up to 34. Uh, median home price is 388,500, so a scooch under $389,000. Glendale is a very, very diverse city. It has a little bit of everything. Besides the regular uh, shopping, restaurants, and outdoor activity, it has a very uh, diverse and options available as far as what kind of neighborhoods you wanna live in. It does have the regular suburbs, um, also the historic district of Glendale, which is very unique. Um, if you ever get an opportunity to go there and you don't wanna live there, just make sure you go there to the uh, downtown historic district as well as we have modern living and golf course living. Lots of golf courses to choose from, whether you wanna live on the golf course or drive to the golf course. Your travel time from Glendale to downtown Phoenix, if you wanna venture there, or even the airport, give or take, is about 30 to 40 minutes, depending on the time of day and the, and the day of travel that you go. But either way, it's not gonna be difficult to navigate down there because our freeway system is very, very easy to navigate. So you just hop on the freeway and head on down to either downtown Phoenix or even the airport. Uh, you have downtown Phoenix and then just a scooch to the east is to the airport. So super, super easy to navigate to, to either one of those. Being a huge sports fan, I've got to mention the sports, especially the professional sports. And first on my list, of course, is football. I absolutely, absolutely love professional football. And we have the Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> Good, bad, ugly, whatever you want to say. I love my Arizona Cardinals. And they have a stadium here actually in Glendale on the west side. It's actually also near the Westgate Entertainment District. But their stadium is in Glendale. So kind of like right in your own backyard, so to speak, if you decide to live in Glendale. We also have the Arizona Diamondbacks, which their field is downtown Phoenix. And then we have the Phoenix Suns and the Phoenix Mercury uh, basketball for the men and the women. They share the same arena, and that is also downtown Phoenix as well. In fact, if you go downtown Phoenix, you, you have the stadium for the football, not the football, the um, the baseball field and the basketball arena are relatively close to each other. And if you decide that you want to go down there, make sure you leave plenty of time either before or after the game to visit the many uh, boutique restaurants down there. You have a, a very nice time down there. If you like to drink, you have a nice little cocktail as well. But either way, make time to go down there and grab something to eat at all the restaurants down there that's available for you to do that as well. Oh yeah, I have to also remind you that we do have ice hockey here in the desert. Arizona Coyotes, they used to be in Glendale and then they moved over to Tempe over at the Arizona State's Mullet Arena. 
Um, so they're down there for right now. They're slated to be there till I believe it's 2024. And where they're going to go after that, we do not know, uh, even if they're going to stay here in Arizona. So, you know, with the coyotes, there's a big following with them, but it's always uncertain whether they're going to stay here or leave. And if they stay here, where they're going to go. But at the moment, yes, we do have ice hockey here in the desert and it's in Tempe at the um, Arizona State Mullets Arena. Okie dokie, so we're going to start with the crows. The good, the great, and the incredible about living in Arizona, especially in Glendale, Arizona. Of course, number one on the list for me is the weather. I absolutely, absolutely love the winters in Arizona. You just can't beat it. I always say I'd much rather shovel the sunshine rather than the snow, but that's just me. Our temperatures in Arizona during the wintertime are coldest month is usually December and the high or the low high is 66 degrees. Um, the low at night, it does get sometimes around freezing. So if you're coming from the Midwest or the East Coast where it gets much colder, then it's not gonna be, be a big deal for you. But anyway, our winters are absolutely, absolutely marvelous. Our rainy months are normally January, February. We do get a lot of rain also in the summer during the monsoons, but our most rainy months, does that even make sense? Our, our rainy months are January and February. If you are coming from snow country and you're having withdrawals and you want to go see the snow, go play in the snow, whether you want to make snow angels, snowmen, go snowboarding or skiing, we can take care of that for you too. It's just a two hour drive up north to Flagstaff. You go up there, play in it, do whatever you want to your heart's content. And then it's a, just a two hour drive back down to the valley. Then you put on your shorts and go play golf. Yeah, it's just the one, of, one of the many benefits of living here in Arizona. We're down in the valley. We have great weather during the winter time. And if you want to go play in the snow or do whatever you want to do in the snow, it's just a two hour drive up to Flagstaff to go do that. Other activities around the valley and in Glendale, we have hiking, biking, boating, trail running, trail bike riding, golfing, uh, paddle boarding, kayaking, whatever your heart's content. There are just so many outdoor activities to do around here, uh, from climbing the uh, well-known Camelback Mountain to uh, exploring the Desert Botanical Garden, which is really, really nice to go see as well as um, explore the national parks in Arizona. Did you know we have 22 national parks in Arizona? It's amazing how many national parks uh, you know we have here. When I was looking into it, I was like shocked that we had 22. It's like 22, wow. So 22 national parks. If you're into the national parks, we got some there for you as well. But as I said, Desert Botanical Garden, you just gotta go see it. You know, if you want to have some ideas about what you wanna do with landscaping around your yard, um, go there. They have uh, walking paths and acres and acres of uh, different types of vegetations and flowers that grow very well here in Arizona and it gives you some wonderful ideas and there are people there to help you and talk with you as well. So make sure you put that on your bucket list to go see the Desert Botanical Garden. If you're a lover of golf, you're definitely in the right place. I mean, when the sunshine shines 300 plus days out of the year, you can definitely play a lot of golf here. Uh, we have both public and private golf courses. Uh, within Glendale of a 15 mile radius, there's about 90 golf courses within a 15 mile radius of Glendale. And then so many others outside of Glendale. Um, so you have a lot to choose from, like I said, between private golf courses and also public golf courses if you're a lover of golf and like to be on the short grass. But I also must mention to you, we do have the PGA Tour that comes to our town, into our backyard every single year. They usually come uh, January or February. It's normally the week of the Super Bowl. So go out and watch the golf during the week and on the weekends. And then on Sunday, go home and watch the football. And hopefully one day it's gonna be the Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> go Cardinals. Anyway, if, even if you're not a golfer, go out and enjoy it. Put it on your bucket list. Uh, especially you have to go visit the uh, famous 16th hole, par three. It's like a stadium atmosphere where thousands of people are there. They're booing, jeering, cheering for the golfers on every one of their shots, depending on what type of shot they hit. If they hit a bad shot, they definitely get booed. I mean, really, really booed. 
Uh, so it's a great atmosphere, it's sort of like a party on short grass. So like I said, even if you're not a golfer, go out to the golf tournament, enjoy it. You will absolutely love it and be glad that you did it. A couple other popular events outside of Glendale I just want to mention because they are so popular here in the state is um, the Arabian Horse Show. That usually comes around February or March and um, people from all over the world come, whether they bring their horses or are spectators. Um, it's just so popular. In fact, um, Patrick Swayze used to come here uh, all the time, he used to show his Arabian horses there a lot. There are just so many uh, people that come here for this popular horse show. If you're not a horse person, go out and see it anyway. I mean, you would just absolutely love it. The variety of classes and uh, events that they have for the Arabian horses is, is absolutely stunning. The other event I wanted to mention to you, and it's also in Scottsdale, is the Barrett Jackson Car Show. Very, very popular. I know there are shows throughout the country at other places, but we do have it here in Scottsdale. Uh, so check that out as well. If you're into cars, you're definitely gonna like that as well. If lakes and water are your thing, we definitely can take care of that as well. We have some great, beautiful lakes here in and around Arizona, whether it's uh, boating, water skiing, jet skiing, fishing, hiking around the lakes, or just going out on the lake for the day with the family and bringing the dog to enjoy it. Uh, we definitely have some. Our, our most popular lake and largest lake is Lake Pleasant. It is located um, North Peoria, North Phoenix. It's kind of butts together, but that's in the north area. Um, on the east side, east of Phoenix, east of Scottsdale, we have Bartlett Lake, Saguaro Lake, Canyon Lake, Apache Lake, and also Roosevelt Lake. Uh, you can go out there and play in the lake and do whatever you want. However, if you're more of a paddleboard person, kayak, and you don't want to mess with all the boats zipping around, a lot of people go down to Tempe Town Lake, which is just south of Phoenix, and they um, play in the lake over there, you know, paddleboard, kayaking, fishing, whatever you want to do down there. It's just a calmer atmosphere. You don't have to worry about the boats uh, zipping by and you getting run over by boat or getting caught up in the wake of the boat. So check that out if that's what you're into. If hiking is your go-to activity, definitely a lot of hiking in Glendale and around the whole valley and around the whole state because we get such great weather and there's so many great trails. So you can hike it, bike it, trail running, uh, trail hiking, whatever your heart desires you wanna do on a trail, we have it for you. In Glendale itself, we have about about give or take 22 trails here some of the popular lakes lakes right some of the popular trails in glendale are arrowhead point which has several lakes i can't get lakes out of my mind several tra trails there we have a choya loop and then t-bird park t-bird park is also thunderbird park and it has several uh, trails there as well. And then another a popular one is Sunrise Trail. Some popular trails outside of Glendale, of course, are Pinnacle Peak, Camelback Mountain, Echo Trail, and Pi West Joe Peak Trail as well. So if you're a hiker, you're definitely gonna to wanna to check those out as well. And you will really, really enjoy that. Uh, just remember, if you're going hiking, remember to bring water. Bring lots of water. And the reason I say that is, is because many times people come here and visit their family or they're vacationing here and they decide, you know what, I wanna go on a hike. And they maybe bring a little water or no water and they get maybe halfway up the, the mountain and they're out and something happens to them. So guess what we, guess what we see them? We send them on the news being rescued to get off the mountain. Don't be one of those. You don't, this is not the time to be on the news because you ran out of water and got dehydrated, especially when the weather's starting to warm up. When you bring water, bring more water <laughs> because I can't stress enough, you need a lot of water. You will get dehydrated out here very, very quickly. And as you're climbing up the mountains, you get exhausted and what do you wanna do? You wanna drink water more than you normally would drink water. So I'm going to say it again. Drink lots of water. <laughs> if you are a lover of baseball, and who doesn't like baseball? Everybody loves baseball, right? It's America's pastime. Um, this is the place for you. We have spring training in Arizona, uh, and we have 15 teams, and they play at 10 different ball fields around the valley, uh, one of which is also in Glendale. The teams that we have that come here are Arizona Diamondbacks, Chicago Cubs, Chicago White Sox, Cincinnati Reds, Cleveland Guardians, Colorado Rockies, Kansas City Royals, 
LA Angels, LA Dodgers, Milwaukee Brewers, Oakland A's, although I think they're moving somewhere else, but not quite sure where they're going yet, San Diego Padres, San Francisco Giants, Seattle Mariners, and of course, Texas Rangers. So if baseball is your thing, spring training is your thing, this is the best way to go out and see it, enjoy the sunshine, and enjoy the time with your family, and enjoy some baseball. Spring training, everybody loves spring training. It's a great time to watch all the baseball teams that you like, and enjoy and being outside, getting some vitamin D from nature. Okie dokie, moving on. As I mentioned earlier, we were gonna talk about schools, and this is where we're going to talk about it. Glendale is known for a variety of schools and actually they have excellent ratings. Uh, they get many uh, awards for uh, being recognized for their educational programs. So uh, this is great. Um, if you're coming to Glendale and you have kids that need to go to school or maybe you're a teacher and you need employment for go to school, we have a lot of schools for you to choose from. And this is how many we have currently right now in, in the Glendale area. So for preschools, we have 135 preschools, 91 elementary schools, 70 middle schools, 46 high schools, 78 public district schools, 19 charter schools, 104 private schools. Wow, <laughs> that's, that's a lot of schools for Glendale. So like I said, if you're looking for a school for your children or you're a teacher and need employment with the schools, you, you have a variety to choose from. Um, what I do suggest and encourage you to do, please do your homework. For me, when I'm looking at schools, I also use greatschools.org and niche.com. They show rankings and ratings and have a bunch of other information in there as well. So please look into that or any other sites that you would prefer so that you can pick the best one for you and or your family. Moving on to economy and jobs in Glendale, it's very good here in Glendale. Um, some of the top employers in Glendale are actually Luke Air Force Base. We have Banner Health. Healthcare is huge here in Arizona. Arrowhead Town Center. We have Walmart is a big employer. Um, Glendale Union High School District, as well as Glendale Community College. As far as Arizona as a whole, the major employment sector for Arizona, as I said, includes healthcare. Healthcare is huge here in Arizona, as well as aerospace, electronics, and also the semiconductor uh, manufacturing plant. That is growing by leaps and bounds here in Arizona. In fact, we are now becoming and being dubbed the uh, Silicon Desert. So that's growing, as I said, so if that's what you're into, you're definitely gonna have some choices there. In fact, there's a big, huge plant coming up over off of the I-17 on the west side, um, just near the 303 freeway, and then it's gonna be in North Peoria. And yes, we gotta talk about the housing market. Of course, we have to talk about housing market, real estate, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Uh, you have options in Glendale. Um, you do have the downtown district, as I mentioned earlier. It has three little sections in the downtown district. Um, it has the, the historic Caitlin Court, which is sort of like Mayberry RFT because um, it is the white picket fences and the tree-lined uh, streets uh, down there. The, uh, the other section is Old Town, which is uh, the city's famous antique stores. If you are into antiques, you definitely want to go down there and check it out as, long, as well as look at all the neighborhoods and the housing down there is too. And then there's the center of it all, and it's the uh, Promenade at Palomare. Um, which is very nice and people love to go down there as well. And then if you want to venture into the Glendale Visitor Center, that's down there too. But yes, you can live down around the historic district, uh, which many people do like. Uh, and then again, we also have a regular uh, suburbs and we have golf course living, we have modern living, you know, so we do have a variety for you to choose from. As far as the price range in Glendale, it starts around maybe the low 300s, mid 300s, goes up to the multi-million dollar homes. At the moment, um, our highest priced home in Glendale is just a scooch under $4 million. So between 300,000 and $4 million, you got a large choice. So I'm pretty sure we can find you the home that's best suited for you. As I said, whether you're going to pick a house conveniently located for work or for schools, we can definitely help you navigate and find the best one for you and or your family because you definitely have a lot to choose from. All right, so moving on with the pros, we definitely have to add shopping and restaurants. Who doesn't like to shop and who doesn't like to eat? I know I do, maybe more so on the eating part. Um, we have a variety here in Glendale, both shopping and in restaurants. 
some of the some of the popular uh, shopping areas uh, is the West Gate Entertainment District. It is very popular and it's very nice. It has dining, it has nightlife, it has community events, it has movie theaters. It even has an outdoor splash pad for the kids. So there's so much to do right there. And if you want to just go um, shop and eat and let the kids play on the splash pad, there's and then go see a movie. Well. Maybe not after the splash pad, but somewhere in between there. But there's just so much to do down there. It's just great. It's not that old, it's relatively new, and it's very, very popular. Another one, oh, before I move on, it's located near the Cardinals football stadium. <laughs> so, you know, football, Cardinals. So, you know, another good thing to keep in mind is if you're going to the Arizona Cardinal game, you can go to the, to the um, Westgate Entertainment District, grab something to eat either before or after the game, and then go watch the football. Yay, see, see there you go. <laughs> so the other, the other popular shopping is uh, Arrowhead. It is in uh, North Glendale off of the 101, and it also has shopping, it has restaurants, it has movie theaters, it has a whole lot to choose from down there. Um, and then, like I mentioned before as well, the historic downtown district in Glendale has restaurants and boutique shops and boutique uh, restaurants. So you would like it down there. It's kind of cozy. Go down there for the afternoon and check it out. Uh, there is one other one I wanted to mention. It's called Park West. It borders Glendale and um, Peoria. It's off the 101 in Peoria. There is about, I think, 40 shops and restaurants and movie theaters down there too, and that's relatively new as well. So you might want to check that out if you want to venture forth to another mall to go shopping and or eating. So no matter where you decide you want to go eat, there is a variety here in Glendale to uh, eat. We have Italian, we have Mexican, we have Asian, we have steakhouses, we have Thai food, we have Indian food, we have burgers. And if you're a lover of pizza, we have thin crust, thick crust, deep dish, Chicago style, New York style, whatever style that you are craving for and wanting, we have it here in Arizona. Yes, in the desert, we have your pizza. Make sure you invite me. I love pizza. So pizza we have for you as well. On the flip side, if you have a sweet tooth, I've got to mention you're in the great place if you're in Glendale and you have a sweet tooth because we have our very own candy company. Yep. It's called Soretta Candy Company. It is a family owned company. It was founded in 1923. The candy is absolutely delicious. Wall to wall candy when you walk in there. And if you want to do a self guided tour, I believe they do that every day except on Sundays. That is a fun thing to go do. Go check it out. It is, and then while you're there, of course, buy some candy. So if you have a sweet tooth, definitely want to go check out Soretta Candy Company. It is in Glendale. And actually, they are very involved with Glendale, with the city of Glendale, with the activities and events that happen around Glendale. So go check that out for sure. Way back when, um, Glendale used to be a lot of farmland. In fact, when we moved out here, it was in 1969, a long, long, long time ago, we used to go horseback riding and there used to be fields and fields and fields of farmland and crops. And we used to ride in and around and through them as well. So the reason I mention this is farmer's markets which kind of goes in hand in hand with it. If you're into farmer's markets and you like to shop for fruits and vegetables and so forth regarding that, um, they have a large variety of farmer's markets throughout the whole valley and in Glendale. They tend to slow down a little bit during the summer because of the summer heat, but the rest of the time during the year, they are practically every weekend you can find a farmer's market to go get fruits and vegetables and all sorts of other goodies. So check those out um, and you might enjoy that as well. So farmer's markets, very good here in Glendale. Okay, Doug, so now we're done with the pros for right now. We're gonna move on to the cons, the bad, the ugly, and the yuck. So of course for me, number one for the cons is the weather. Yes, I did have the weather as the pros, number one. And yes, I do have the weather as the cons is number one. Why? Because I'm not a lover of hot weather. For me, my favorite weather is sunny and 69 or 70 degrees. That is my all time favorite weather. But it gets hot, very hot. Our hottest months here are June, July, August, sometimes dribbles into September. But our hottest month is normally uh, July. It's around 107 degrees. That's our average, but it does get up to 110 and also inches its way up to 115, 122. So it is definitely going to be hot. 
So if you're coming from the Midwest or the East where you're used to having your heater on to keep warm during the winter, here you're going to have your air conditioning on to keep cool. It's just opposite. So if uh, the heat is going to bother you a little bit, you're just going to have to run your air conditioner. You just run in, run from the air conditioned house to the air conditioned car to your air conditioned office and you're perfectly fine. So hot is hot, you know, it, it is what it is. So I'd rather have the three, four months of hot weather and have the great winters and the rest of the year. So if you can put up with the three, four months of hot weather, you're golden. Literally, you will be golden, toasty. <laughs> so, okay, moving on. The second con I have are snowbirds. People say, Mary Kay, why do you have snowbirds as a con? Well, I know they're good for the economy. And yes, they are good for the economy, but yes, I have a but. The streets are usually very crowded when they're here and the restaurants, when you go there, the wait time is very, very, very long. So yes, like I said, it's good for the economy, but they tend to drive, not all of them, mind you, they tend to drive a little on the slow side. <laughs> so all I'm saying is if they could just move over and let us zip by, that would be great because you know, when they're here, they're just, they don't have a care in the world. They're just driving along, acting like, wow, isn't this great? because they don't have a care in the world. They're just enjoying life, which is fantastic for them. But the streets are crowded, the restaurant time is longer, and they drive very slowly. Not all of them, but a lot of them. They do drive a little bit slower. So they just pull over and let us go by, that would be perfect. So I'm going to say again, yes, I know they're good for the economy, but for me, it's, a con it's in my con list. Number three on the con list is limited public transit system. It's like, Eh, <laughs> not so good. I mean, our transit system is the light rail downtown Phoenix. There's a little smidgen of, of light rail and then it kind of ventures off to the east through toward Mesa, Tempe area, and it's starting to go in other directions. But for Glendale, for you, if you're going to live in Glendale, there are buses, but you're not going to have a transit light rail system at all. Your transportation is going to be you driving, or calling an Uber. So you driving or calling an Uber, that's gonna be your, your transportation, unless of course, again, you wanna take a bus. There is no public transit system in Glendale other than buses. So you driving or calling Uber, that's it. I know it's not great. We live in a big city. Uh, Phoenix is the fifth largest uh, city in the United States and our public transit system, excuse me, sucks. It, <laughs> It is what it is. Oh. It is what it is. It is, it is what it is. <laughs> I'm sorry, but drive a car. And luckily for us, our roads and our highways are easy to navigate. So off we go. Zip, zip, scooty doo. <laughs> Number four on my con list is an animal. But before I tell you what it is, I have to say, um, I'm a huge, huge, ginormous animal lover. I really, really am. But there are two animals I don't like because I'm afraid of them. But this one is I'm deathly afraid of, and it's snakes. I am terrified beyond terrified of snakes. So that is on my con list. And I know people say to me all the time, but Mary Kay, there are good snakes and bad snakes. Well, I don't like any snake, yuck. So what I'm gonna tell you is be aware of the snakes, especially when the weather gets cold and then it starts to warm up. When you walk out your front door, back door, make sure you look down and to the sides because they could be right out to your doorstep or they could be off to the corner, all curled up, enjoying the sunshine, just being there, minding their own business, sort of. But just be aware of them. Keep your eyes out. Keep your eyes peeled um, that, they're, that they're going to be there. Another thing to be mindful of is like I said, they like to hibernate during the winter. That's my favorite time. If I were a hiker, I would only hike during the winter because that's when the snakes are sleeping. <laughs> when they come out, there's no way I'm going hiking. But anyway, <laughs> I digressed here a little bit. Anyway, so they like to hibernate and some of the places they like to hibernate, guess where? In your garage. Yes, yeah, so you may one day as the weather starts to warm up, you're gonna go open your door, step out in your garage and it's gonna be Hello, yep, he or she's gonna be there looking up at you and say, hey, I have been your renter for all winter. I am right here. So just be aware, they could be there. You're gonna open the garage and they're gonna be there because it's starting to warm up and they wanna get out. So just be mindful, keep your eyes open and be aware that they are there. Another thing to be considered with the snakes, if you're a hiker 
and you're going out hiking, especially during the winter time and it starts to warm up and you're gonna go out with your earphones on, you're gonna have your music up real loud and you're gonna go hiking, jam into your tunes. Don't, don't do that. Please, please, please don't do that. Why? Because if you have your music up so loud and it's a rattlesnake, you are not going to hear the rattlesnake rattle its rattle and there is a possibility you may be bitten. And then guess what? We're gonna see you on the news again, being rescued off the mountain. This is not time to be on the news. No, 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 no. So when you're out hiking, please either don't wear the, the, your earphones or at least have one of them off or keep the volume down. I know it's kind of hard. You want the music blasting in your ears. You want to go hiking. I get it, been there, done that. But when the snakes are coming out, you don't want to be anywhere near them. Trust me, you don't, especially when they start coming out. They are mean and feisty and nasty. I don't like snakes. <laughs> Other wildlife to be aware of when you're out here, if you have small animals, small dogs, small cats, whatever the case may be, we have predators that like them. So if you're going out with them for them to go potty, you have to be aware of um, the coyotes, the hawks, and the owls. They will come down and they will snatch your pet up just like that. And please don't think just because, oh, I have a fence around my yard and it's six feet or eight feet tall, the coyote can just trot up to the fence and hop over that fence without a problem at all and snatch up your pet. So don't think just because you have a fence around your yard, your pet is safe because it's not. And, and also with the hawks and the owls. I've had friends where they had their dog on a leash and they are turning their back, paying, not paying attention, and they felt a tug on the leash and a hawk was trying to fly off with it. So don't do that. Don't have your dog out there, be on your telephone and ignoring your pet because in a blink of an eye, seriously, in a blink of an eye, they can be gone. If you're coming in, bring them in because you don't want to have anything happen to them. Wildlife out here is just here. It's we are living in their habitat. We are living in their, in their, uh, their home and we are um, impeding upon them and we have to live accordingly. So be aware of the um, coyotes, the hawks, the owls, and the snakes. So there you have it. The good, the bad, the ugly, the pretty of living in Glendale, Arizona. You know, Glendale, Arizona is actually a marvelous place to live. There is more good on my list for living here in Glendale, Arizona, because I absolutely love living in Arizona. To me, Arizona is a fantastic state to live in, and I think you will too. Um, if you need any help navigating it, we would be happy and delighted to help you. As I mentioned earlier, my name is Mary Kay Marino, and I would love to help you. Whether you're moving in nine days or 90 days, call, text, email us, days, nights, weekends. All our information is below in the description. I'm here to help, serve, and support you, and help you find you a new place to call home at the highest level possible. So, until we see you around town next time, show you around town next time, you have an awesome, marvelous, incredible day. Bye for now.